Do you remember the time James and Peter Brock did Target Tasmania in a purple Tirana that James built? Averaging about nine, ten hours a day, so lots of hours. Most of my life. <laughs> did you ever wonder what happened to that car after the event? In this video, we'll see that Tirana in its current state, along with all the other Tiranas from the Lloyd's auction of the Unreal Collection. The Unreal Collection was a collection of 50 cars from an unknown collector, which included everything from a Ford Prefect to a Lamborghini Aventador, as well as a vast array of touring cars, sports sedans, and V8 supercars from every era of Australian motorsport history. We already made a video about the top 10 highest value cars in the auction. I'll put a link in the description to that so you can watch that one later. But today we're concentrating on the Tiranas. To kick off, let's start with the three GMP and A 800 catches that were offered up for sale. These cars are built from a batch of 33 race shells that were supplied to race teams direct from Holden with a heap of improvements over a standard shell. These shells were available for purchase from GM parts and accessories, which is what GMP and A stands for, and had GMP and A stamped on the tag where the body number usually goes. These shells were strengthened and lightened by removing anything that was not required for racing, including things like exhaust hangers, sound deadening, and anything else that wasn't required for a race car. The Unreal Collection included three of these shells. One that was raced by Warren Cullen in 78 and 79. It was painted in Ford Yellow Glow back then. I haven't been able to find any footage of it. If you're looking for it, that's what it was then. Currently in the Marlboro Library as a rolling shell and it sold for 315,000 bucks. So that's probably a pretty good deal for a GMP and A hatch. The other two cars really shouldn't exist because they were built from spare hatches. One was a Bill Patterson spare car that was set aside for Brocky, but it never got used. That one sold for $395,000. And the third one is another spare hatch, which has had a 308 and four speed installed, but has only done 475 Ks. That one is touted as the rarest Tirana in the world. The third GMP and A hatch was passed in at $500,001. We don't know what the final price was on that, but assuming it would have sold, they just need to do some more negotiation. There was one other hatch in the collection, and that was a 1976 Alex Tirana SS Tribute. This one has got a 308 stroke to 355 with a 671 blower. What more do you need than that in your Alex hatch? It's also got a heap of other goodies, of course. It's got a strengthened diff, drop tank, B&M shifter, Simmons wheels. That one sold for 119,000, and you'd think that's a pretty good price for a car with that motor. I think you'd be hard pressed to find one cheaper than that. And the fact it's part of the Unreal Collection, I mean, that adds a little bit of value, surely. All right, moving on to the next one. We've got a 1973 Holden LJ Tirana XU2 Tribute. Of course, the XU2 is not a real thing. It was an assumption by many that the V8 Tirana would be an XU2, which in fact it never would have been. The XU2 code was a panel van code, I believe. Um, it would have been called something completely different. A lot of Holden dealers did offer the LJ with the V8 engine in it with a 308 and 4 speed and they were known as XU2s even though they weren't the factory car. So this is a tribute to those. It's a really nice looking little car. The paint looks great. That one sold for 68500 which again is another bargain. You try and find a V8 Tirana for that kind of money. You're gonna struggle. Next, we've got another LJ. It's 1974 LJ. It is a rare color, orchid metallic, and it was bought by a guy for his daughter. He actually bought it from Perth and took it over to Sydney, I believe. He bought it sight unseen, and when it got there, it was too nice for his daughter that he bought it for, so he put it away. And then it's obviously changed hands a few times. It's ended up in the Unreal Collection. Very nice looking little car. That sold for 41,166 bucks, which for a four door, that's top dollar. Very nice one. I don't think anyone who bought it at that price could go wrong. Back to the question we asked at the start of the video, what happened to that purple Tirana? It was originally an S Tirana built up to LJXU1 specs by James Brock. <laughs> Here's what happened at the end of that race. We passed two cars in the last fast stage. And yeah, they were, I mean, we passed an A9X and an NSX Honda, so, you know, and this, you know, 26 year old car, so <laughs> I don't know what the bloke in the NSX was thinking, but I told him to take it easy on the, uh, it's the last stage, just gotta get back to Hobart. Peter Brock's nerve as steady as ever. His foot flat to the boards, the speedo clocking over 200 as the Tirana hurtled towards the finish. Then the unthinkable happened. An innocent looking bend on Mount Arrowsmith claimed the most celebrated name in Australian motorsport. Proof once and for all that Targa cares little for reputations. We were going across there very quickly. I came in there right hander, thought I was looking pretty good. The road was damp just as I was turning in. It got damper and damper as the car started understeering. And I finished up out wide, 
just went down this gutter on the left hand side. Fortunately, he didn't hit anything, no rocks or trees or whatever, but it certainly held the radiator and that was it went out of the event. After it was crashed, it got fixed up again by James. He took it racing the Historic Racing Car Series, which I believe became the Bianchi Historic Touring Car Series. Peter actually drove the car in that series as well. But when it went to the Bianchi Series, it got painted in the yellow with black stripes. I didn't know this before this auction. I had no idea what had happened to that car, so I thought you guys might want to know as well. It's pretty interesting. It is originally a, a two-door S Tirana. And it didn't really have a lot of success. It didn't actually sell. It was passed in at $109,000. The final Tirana in the Unreal Collection is... The 1972 LJ GTR XU1, it's a Ron Hodgson Trana driven by Bob Morris. Still has raced, it hasn't been restored, it's had a new Dave McLean engine source and put in it. Lloyd's actually mentioned during the auction that it's got the original motor in it. I don't think that's true because in the pre-auction stuff, they said that it had a period correct mode, which was then replaced by a Dave McLean engine that the most recent owner sourced. The most notable thing this car did was sit on the back of a trailer with a whole heap of other Ron Hodgson cars. You've probably seen that photo of if I find it, I'll put it up. But it also came second in the 1974 Touring Car Championship behind Brocky. You have to remember too that in 74, by the end of it, they were racing the V8, the new LH Tirana. Bobby Morris was still in the LJ. People that are casual observers of touring cars probably don't realize how good Bob Morris was. He was one of the better drivers. Quite often would be the only one to challenge Brocky. You know, I've done a lot of these highlights videos and stuff where I watch the races and chop out the interesting bits. And Bobby Morris is always up there. He's, he's the one challenging. And also Alan Grice as well, but you know, I think because his career was cut short a little bit after the accident in 81, we didn't really see the best of Bobby Morris. I think he could have been another one that's up there with the rest of the legends like Larry Perkins, Jim Richards, Brocky, Dick Johnson, all those guys. He, he is definitely among those guys for talent and uh, skill behind the wheel. That car sold for $280,000. Pretty rare car, and I think the $280,000 justifies the uh, cost. Very nice addition to any collection. If you've got this far into the video and you're enjoying it, you should probably just click that little subscribe button. I do love Australian muscle cars. There's another video here for you to watch. Red says you should click it.